Is blockchain gaming worth it? According to data from Dark Radar, blockchain gaming is actually driving usage on the blockchain in the past quarter. In this video, we'll discuss why there's even gaming on the blockchain, as well as the ways that you can earn from blockchain gaming. Let's jump straight in. Blockchain unlocks something that gamers have wanted to do for decades. They want the ability to move and sell their items at their pleasure. Traditionally in video games, the items that you buy and earn whilst playing belong to the company. The in-game item sales industry in traditional gaming is massive as people buy items such as virtual swords and skins that can actually cost thousands of dollars. These virtual goods exist only in the games and the game creators are actually quite controlling of them. But as a player, you'd want the ability to give your items away to potentially your younger sibling or maybe even sell it to other passionate players. Blockchain technology is really good for proving ownership as assets and we have seen the NFT market boomed because an NFT is essentially digital ownership. So this combination of ownership, blockchain and gaming has been phenomenal and as we can see, it's definitely been something that people are gravitating to as we see a lot of wallets are connecting to blockchains primarily to play games games. From the gaming on the blockchain revolution, we have this concept called play to earn games. The ability to earn real money whilst gaming has made blockchain gaming very popular amongst players globally. An example is a game called Axie Infinity, which has gathered popularity, especially in 2021, and it made $2 billion in sales in this year alone, which is probably second to Ethereum when it comes to their revenue earned from gas costs. So basically, the way that you earn in a play-to-earn game is that you receive a reward in the form of cryptocurrency for doing something such as winning a battle or completing a quest. People can actually earn anywhere between 15 USD to 100 US dollars per day. And this is life-changing money for people, especially in some countries or maybe various age groups. Because in Thailand, for example, the minimum wage is actually 11 US dollars per day. And since the pandemic, there haven't been a lot of tourists going to Thailand. And as we know, their economy is driven by tourism. Well, I think it is. So if that's correct, then I can tell that this will definitely be a game changer for them because they had an ability to actually earn money during the pandemic. And so much so that the government of Thailand has taken notice and they wanted to tax the revenue earned from in-game rewards. Let's talk about five ways that you can potentially earn from blockchain gaming. And as a reminder, this is not financial advice. I'm just letting you know what's going on in these streets. So when it comes to blockchain gaming, the games are not necessarily played on a blockchain, but the digital assets are stored on the blockchain. So as a result, that particular blockchain, you have to pay transaction fees in the native token of that blockchain. So if we have more people using the blockchain for gaming, then the utility token will be purchased more. People see this as an opportunity to invest or potentially trade. As you can see here, when we look at the blockchains that are being played, we look at the users who are using it, so the number of wallets that are connecting to the blockchain, as well as the volume being transacted. So here is an example of a chart that I created, which looks at the top blockchains, I mean the top game, sorry, for the month of September and which blockchains are being used. And we see that we have Binance Smart Chain being used a lot, Hive and Thundercore. Now this is in terms of wallets connecting. If we look at volume of um, assets being transacted, that might be a more interesting statistic. So you could decide that you want to buy the token of a particular blockchain, for example, Hive. But I should warn you, the Hive blockchain is primarily used by people who are playing games and it's by this one game called Splinter's World. So if for some reason people stop playing that game, then people won't be purchasing the token to pay for their gas fees. Also, the native token that's being used for gas fees, in some instances, they can also be used to purchase NFTs for the games as well. Another way that you can earn from blockchain gaming is actually purchasing the governance token of the blockchain. So even though the game has non-fungible assets, you also have some governance tokens that are created. So in the game Axie Infinity, the governance token is called AXS. And that token actually saw a massive run up in the month of... September, actually in the last quarter, because there was over $2 billion in assets that have been traded this year and that got everyone super excited. Now the governance token normally gives you the opportunity to vote on decisions, but recently they also introduced staking, actually I think two days ago. So that makes people super excited as well because they can earn from holding the token, which makes things, you know, a bit bullish for the current time being. 
The third way that you can potentially earn from blockchain gaming is by buying the NFTs needed for the game, playing the game, and earning in-game rewards. For example, in Axie Infinity, you buy these little cute Axie monsters, you battle them, and you earn a token called Smooth Love Potion. This is the reward, it's also a cryptocurrency, and it is traded. Mind you, the token that you get as a reward tends to have unlimited supply, at least in the games that I have seen. So you have to look at the tokenomics to see if this is a good outcome for you. But in general, this is a way that people have been earning loads during the pandemic. The third way, the fourth way that you can earn from blockchain gaming is by flipping NFTs. So if you know a game is going to be super duper popular, you buy the NFTs from that game. So for example, these Axie monsters, or you could purchase land or even in-game assets. And when the game becomes really popular and these items are highly sought after, you could potentially flip it for a profit. The fifth way that you can earn from blockchain gaming is by these DeFi mechanics, such as yield farming and staking. So as you see with Axie Infinity, you can now stake the governance to token with a popular game called Mobox NFT for Farmers, which is on the Binance Smart Chain. I think the yield farming aspect is very much baked in the game. If you yield farm their token with BNB, I think you earn tokens, which you can then use to buy NFTs or something like that. I'm not really too sure about this one, but nonetheless, it still shows that you can do the similar yield farming thing. If you notice, this list is very I would, say, um, I would say all of these options are risky, but it got riskier as I moved down the list. You know, if you are bullish on a particular blockchain and it has blockchain gaming, then buying more of the token would make some sense to you. But buying a random token like Mbox to then yield farm to earn the NFT, like you have to be super bullish on the game, the ecosystem and the people involved. But nonetheless, these were five ways that you can earn from blockchain gaming. Now let's talk about whether this is all worth it. So whilst you're busy, you know, hunting for the next profile picture NFT or, you know, doing some yield farming on some unmarked terrains, people are playing games and earning money. And I think just that aspect alone makes blockchain gaming very, very interesting for those who are hobby gamers, as well as those who are looking for alternative sources of income. I think being able to play games and earn money is definitely something that you haven't heard a lot of. We know of professional gamers who play at esports, but it's great that the average gamer or maybe above average gamer can earn from playing crypto as well as create a real value from the time that they spent in game. I thought it was really interesting because I read recently that crypto gaming companies actually were funded with $476 million of investments this year, which apparently accounts for around 9% of the investments that went into gaming according to Decrypt. So that shows that a lot of people who are investing in games are definitely seeing the potential of gaming on the blockchain. So I think it's only getting started. So whether you're a hobbyist or you just care about blockchain technology and would like to be a part of it, I do think you should be paying attention to blockchain gaming. Even if you don't have the time to play it, you should still see what's happening in this space because gamers are already online. So if they like what they see, they will come to play regardless of whether the blockchain is Wax, Binance Smart Chain, or Ethereum. If it's a good game, it's a good game. So I'm really excited to see how this space develops. Let me know if you've been playing any blockchain games or if you will pay attention to this space a bit more now that you've seen this video. Don't forget to share this video, subscribe, leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!